Hello folks, and you join me on what is an absolutely glorious early spring day. We've had um, about a week or 10 days where but it looks like a high's been sitting over us and um, quite a lot of Europe as well. And so the weather's been absolutely blinding, which has been really good because it's enabled me to get out and have a good old play with the sea star. Now, those of you who've got a Sea Star, either an S30 or, or an S50, will realise that counterintuitively, having the Sea Star find the moon seems to be way more difficult than it locating some tiny dim galaxy 30 million light years away. And the reason for this is the, the way that the Sea Star actually finds objects in the sky. When the sea star is looking for a, a deep sky object like a, a galaxy or a nebula, what it does is it points itself to where it thinks the object actually is, takes an image of that area and then compares that with a database that it's got built into it. And it looks at the star patterns and from that it can work out where it's actually pointed rather than where it thinks it's pointing. Having worked that out, it's then able to slew across to the actual target and um, get it pretty well dead centre very quickly. And this process is called plate solving. On the other hand, when it's looking for the moon, if you're uh, using the planetary mode of the, the sea star. It doesn't do this. It um, uses its compass calibration and its level calibration to try and figure out where the moon is. And nine times out of ten, it gets it wrong. It can't really do plate solving on the moon because the moon's so bright that it probably blows out all the stars around it. So it can't really do the, the methodology that it, it needs to. The net result of this is that you then end up trying to manually slew the sea star to the moon, which on the S30 isn't too bad because the S30 has a wide angle lens, which um, helps you locate objects of bright objects in the sky, like the moon and the sun. The S50, on the other hand, doesn't have this, and it has quite a small field of view. So finding the moon and getting it centered can be somewhat of a challenge and take you ages. Luckily, there's a really good workaround to this, and it involves using the star gazing mode, uh, normally used for deep sky objects, in order to locate the moon. And it's uh, that today that I'm going to show you how to do. My name's John, and I make videos on camping, walking, and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video, then please check my channel out, as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this video. I'm going to take you outside in a moment. Um, I did this uh, video uh, a few days after taking a picture of the moon and show you what I actually did. And the long and short of it is that you go into stargazing mode, you search for a bright known star, I use uh, Betelgeuse, which is the one I'm using for the moment, and you get the sea star to do all its plate solving so it knows where it is, auto focusing and leveling using this very bright star. And the sea star is really, really good at doing this. It's useful, obviously, that you can identify one or two stars in the sky, but the good news is that you probably only need, I don't know, three or four of them across the whole year that you know where they are so that you know the sea stars pointing in, in the right place. And um, in the wintertime, Betelgeuse and Aldabaram are really good ones. Um, Capella in Auriga is a really bright star as well. In the summertime, something like um, Vega or Deneb are really good stars to use. And these stars, one or other of them, is pretty well visible all year round. So anyway, let's um, 
kick back and see the process that you go through actually on my phone. The first little bit uh, where I focus in on uh, Betelgeuse is a repeat of what I showed in the first video that I did about the Seastar S30 a couple of weeks ago and we'll um, go on from there. Okay, so having um, connected to the Sea Star, we want to open the arm, and once that's open, click on the picture of the Sea Star at the top to go into the settings. And here we want to turn on the anti dew heater and just have a quick look at the advanced settings. And in those, I'm going to leave them as they are. And today I'm not going to bother stacking every frame because I'm not really going to be doing much in the way of deep sky. Now click on the sky atlas at the bottom of the screen. And having done that, click on the object search button at the top of the screen. Now scroll along until you see named stars. And here there's a whole list of stars that um, by the look of it, are arranged by order of um, how high up they are in the sky. So here you just want to scroll through until you find the star that you're going to use, which is um, hopefully clearly visible above trees, not obstructed by cloud or anything. And um, in my case, at this time of year, it's often Betelgeuse that I use for this. Now click go to at the bottom and the sea star will attempt to slew across to where it thinks Betelgeuse actually is. So what the sea star now does is it goes through its plate solving, its horizontal calibration, uh, it goes through an autofocus routine and takes some calibration frames. And at the end of this process, which only takes a couple of minutes or so, the sea star knows exactly where it's pointed. It knows that it's got the right focus and it knows the location of all of the celestial objects in the sky in relation to where it is. And when you get to this point, it drops out into um, the live view mode. We've now finished with the calibration star. So we want to enter the Sky Atlas by pressing the plow icon at the bottom of the page. So now we want to locate the moon and we can either do this by looking in the object list at the top of the page or doing what I did and simply scrolling the atlas across until um, you find the moon and centre on that. Now press the go to button at the bottom of the screen and the sea star will attempt to do a go to to the moon. And you can see the little blue rectangle moving towards the red rectangle where the moon is theoretically located. The sea star, however, won't be able to do a full go to on the moon because it can't really use the plate solving techniques that it wants to on that object. So what you want to do is wait until the blue rectangle is over the red rectangle and the chances are it's now found the moon but can't quite finish it off. And at this point you want to press the stop button to stop it doing a go to. At this point it will drop you back into live mode and you should see a super overly exposed moon in your uh, phone and the reason it's overexposed is the settings in stargazing mode are not really designed for the moon so um, don't worry about that for the moment. Now drop out of stargazing mode by pressing the down arrow at the top to enter the kind of home screen of the sea star. 
now select solar system out of the options and click on the moon. Now click go gazing and skip the go to because you're already pointed at the moon. You'll then drop into live mode where you'll hopefully see the moon. Um, you might want to fiddle around a bit and center it slightly using the joystick perhaps initially and um, enlarge the view to see that the focus is still okay um, but hopefully you've now got a perfectly exposed moon uh, that you can take a, a little snapshot of uh, to go into your um, phone Now select video and make sure you turn on the raw button. That's quite important. And also press the button at the top that will auto center the moon and um, take a recording of maybe 20 seconds or so. When you've finished with your approximate 20 seconds long video, you just press the red button to stop the recording and the C-Star will then save that video into itself. You may then want to fiddle around with the uh, magnification and um, take some more little snapshots um, or some more videos at two times and four times magnification just to see what, what happens. Um, I like taking some snapshots as backups just in case there's a, a problem uh, when it comes to stacking the videos. Once you've finished, drop back into the home page and click on My Album. There you'll see the saved photos on your phone. And you can have a little flick through them um, just to see how the different magnifications came out. But now select the Sea Star album to go into the images and videos that are stored on the Sea Star itself. And you'll see a whole bunch of them. Click on the album marked Luna um, up there. And you'll notice that some of the videos have the word raw next to them and those are the ones that we want to use for the purposes of our stacking so pick one of the videos and press the word stack at the top of the screen the stacking process itself takes um, around three minutes or so to do a, a 20 second stack once it's finished at 100 percent you'll see a check now button that if you press takes you to the finished photo. It's possible to do some basic editing on this photo, just things like changing brightness and contrast if you want to um, within the app itself. And when you're happy, you can press the download button and then press to send that image to your phone if you want. Now you just backtrack your way um, up to the main C star menu and close the C star down. Um, and you can then take the image that you took or that's on your phone and um, do a little bit of fiddling around if you want in whatever phone editor you happen to have. Um, the editing tools within the C-Star themselves are quite good, but I, I usually just take the image from the C-Star and do a little bit of messing about um, on my phone editor. Uh, you can fiddle around a little bit with um, sharpness uh, and get rid of any any noise or halos that there are on in a typical phone editor. But yeah, that's um, that's about it. So it's all pretty straightforward. So I hope you guys found that interesting. I'm going to put a picture of the um, the moon that I took uh, after the stacking process, or one of the pictures anyway, um, at the end of the video, uh, along with a couple of star clusters that I also took kind of whilst I was at it. Um, as regards the moon, um, 
the results that you get out of the C Star using the software within the C Star itself are uh, very good, but they're, they're not the best that you can get. Um, if you use a dedicated camera for planetary photography and uh, a telescope with a, a long focal length, you get higher magnification and crisper views. But nonetheless, I think what you get out of the Sea Star is really good. Uh, the S50, incidentally, produces crisper pictures than the um, S30 does. It's um, got a better resolution and uh, a longer focal length, so you're getting higher magnification images. But I'm quite happy with what I get uh, out of the, the S30. And certainly anybody starting out would be um, quite delighted, I would think. One thing that you can do is take the raw video out of the S30 and put it through dedicated planetary stacking software. The one that um, I typically use is called Auto Stack Art, um, but there are um, a number of these sorts of programs. What essentially the programs are doing, including the, the built-in stuff in the C-Star, is uh, when you look at the feed that's coming through to your screen, you can see that at higher magnifications, the moon is shimmering because of the atmospheric disturbance. And this is what makes it difficult to take an individual single snapshot um, the stacking programs will pick the best of the frames within the video that you've taken and stack them together. And the uh, more sophisticated programs like um, Auto Stack Art will enable you to fiddle around with some settings to get the best possible result. Whereas the um, software internal to the C Star, uh, you've got no real control over. The, the result is the result. If you like taking pictures of the moon, it might be worth taking the uh, video out of the software on the Sea Star itself and uh, dropping it into one of these third party software programs on your, your computer just to see what um, improvement you can make. Um, but anyway, for, for now, I'm uh, quite happy with what comes out of the Sea Star. And um, yeah, as I say, I hope you found this video handy for uh, locating the moon and i'll um, i'll put some pictures up now take care see you bye bye